Welcome back to FOMO Sapiens, the show for entrepreneurial thinkers. I'm your host, Patrick J. McGinnis, and it's Tuesday, so you know what that means. It's time for another round of Pat GPT. This is the show where I do exactly what ChatGPT does. I give you information that will help you in your work, but unlike ChatGPT, I'm not going to make things up. Our topic today is four steps to start your entrepreneurial journey. All right, let's go. Start generating. Now, why this topic? Because if you want to take bigger swings, which is, of course, our theme this season, you got to move from the I want to to the I am doing right? That is the move. There's this awesome concept I love, which by the way, I use all the time. So I'm just going to give you my secret to everything right now so that you'll see it now. It's like the matrix. It's called dynamic framing. And it's about where we are today, where we want to be and how we get from one to the other. It's a little tool I learned. I love dynamic framing. And this is really a dynamic framing topic, right? We want to be entrepreneurs, many of us. And it doesn't have to be, by the way, you're starting the next open AI It doesn't have to be that. It could be you're starting any kind of thing. You are starting a jam company. I once worked for this company called Stonewall Kitchen when I was a student. I did a little project for them with a couple of friends. They started that business by making jam and then selling it at a fair, at a a farmer's market in Southern Maine and Northern New Hampshire and around New, New England. And then it turned into this behemoth. It's a wonderful company, by the way. Every time I go there, I leave with tons of jam and then I eat it and I love it. But that is the story. It's not, it doesn't have to be this big dramatic thing. It can start small and quiet and grow into something really meaningful or not, right? It can be something that you always do on the side. And this has been, of course, a topic I've thought a lot about, talked a lot about, but still, it is really hard to figure out how to get going. I talk to prospective entrepreneurs all the time and I hear the same things. I hear, well, you know, I don't know quite how to get started. I have this great idea, but what do I do next? And in fact, I was out in LA a couple of weeks ago talking to a very capable prospective entrepreneur who had actually run his own business before. And he had some cool ideas, very interesting ideas about a business he wanted to start. And these were the questions he was asking. So we really got into it. And it was interesting for me to hear him where his sort of blockages were or his pain points were about how to start a business. And so I think that's really, really, really important, really important for today. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start every week talking about these topics. And then I will go deeper into some of these specific items because... It's good to be at the high level, but let's get into the weeds together. So that's what we're going to do. Four steps to start your entrepreneurial journey. We will start that right after this break. FOMO. FOMO. All right, we're back. ChatGPT, four steps to start your entrepreneurial journey. And the first one, validate your business idea. Now, this assumes, of course, that you've already come up with a business idea. And we can talk about that. We will talk about that later on another episode, but assuming you have an idea that you have spent some time ideating, then you need to validate that it makes any sense at all, right? And this is where the beautiful concept of the MVP comes around. If you haven't read The Lean Startup by Eric Ries, it's a, it's a real great book. It's a real classic in the canon of entrepreneurial literature. The book slaps, as, as the millennials say. And what it's about is you have an idea like say you have an idea, let's talk about jam again. I like the jam idea because it's something that anybody could could do. And by the way, making jam, it's actually, I've messed up jam, but it's not impossible. So you wanna do jam, well, great. How do you validate that idea? Well, the best way to do that is to make some jars of jam and then get somebody to pay for them. As I mentioned, going to the farmer's market or selling at the bake sale at school, just getting the product into people's hands and learning whether or not it's something that people actually want and getting feedback from them. So valuable. So that is step number one. Very powerful. We will talk about this all in more detail throughout the season. But the fundamental point here is figure out if somebody actually wants your product. Now you can do other stuff too. I mean, if you want to do market research and visit stores and see how people interact with the product and understand where the market has a whole, things like that. Like if you go check out 
a Whole Foods or a, a supermarket and walk the aisles, you can sort of see what, what the trends are, what's missing. That'll give ideas. But again, it's really about just figuring out, like, will somebody actually use this product? That's number one. Number two, create a business plan. And a business plan, by the way, you can find all of this online. This is not stuff that's super esoteric. It's like, what is the market I'm going after? Who is the target customer? What is the product? What are the costs of making this thing? How much would I like to charge? What is my prospective profit? All that sort of stuff. What are the resources I need? It's like really thinking about every step of the value chain, which is a term I remember hearing in business school. And I was like, what does that mean? Because I didn't work in consulting, but the value chain is sort of like the notion of like every part of making, selling, commercializing a product from the supply all the way through to the sale. And every part of that value chain has its own dynamics that you got to navigate and figure out. Are you going to outsource? Are you going to make yourself? Are you going to sell in stores or online? All that sort of stuff. So thinking through that stuff. And by the way, a business plan obviously is just a starting point. It will change as you learn and grow. But doing some of that homework, it's kind of like going on a trip. If you're going on a trip somewhere that's you know not super easy to travel to, like say you're going on a trip to a mountain in Northern Africa. The Atlas Mountains, I guess, would be an example of that. Beautiful place. You don't just roll in. You have to figure out the flight, the equipment, where you want to go, what you're going to eat, who you're going to go with, all that sort of stuff. It's the same thing. That's what you have to do in a business plan. Number three, identify your target audience. Who would want this product? And this kind of integrates with validation, but thinking through and you can, again, you can back this up with research that you can do. Who is the person who buys this product in a home or business? A lot of times when you're, when you're developing software, a really critical part of that business, because selling software is pretty tricky. It can be, it takes a long time sometimes. And it's like, who am I selling to? The head of HR, the CTO, the, you know, the head of sales, that kind of stuff. So understanding who is the person who's buying, who buys the jam in a household, is it mom? Is it dad? Are you going after singletons and are you going after hipsters in, in, in Brooklyn and, you know, uh, and Silver Lake and in, in, in L.A.? Stuff like that. All of that will really be important because the product and the target consumer must go hand in hand. If you are targeting hipsters and you're making a product that they don't like, like something with tons of preservatives, which I think hipsters aren't supposed to like that, you're in a bad place. So things like that are really important. And number four, and this one is really good. I love this one because it's not talked about enough in this early stage. Think about and choose the right legal structure. And we will do a whole episode on this. I have it in my roadmap. I have it in my business plan as it were for the season. Because it's so, this one people mess up because it's scary. If you're not a lawyer, you're like, ay, 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 which business legal structure to pick? If you get this one wrong, ooh, it can be, it's like the gift that keeps on giving because it can just over and over again mess up your life. So that is a really important topic. I'm not gonna get into that today because we will hit that hard in a couple of weeks. But those are the four steps to start your entrepreneurial journey. Validate your business idea, create a solid business plan, identify your target audience, choose the right legal structure. Now you might be thinking right now, Pat GPT, you missed a couple of things. How about choosing a business partner, right? That's a good one. We will hit all these things later on, but I wanted to start high, high, high level because I could go on for 17 hours about this, but ChatGPT doesn't do that. Quick and dirty. So that's what we're gonna do this season. That's our starting point. I look forward to continuing this conversation. We're gonna take bigger swings together. I will see you on Thursday with another episode of FOMO Sapiens. And until then, Take care of yourselves, FOMO sapiens, and Pat GPT, stop generating. FOMO. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on the web at FOMOSapiens.com or PatrickMcGinnis.com, where you can get all kinds of free resources to live a more decisive and entrepreneurial life. 
FOMO Sapiens is recorded in New York City. Theme music is by Mike McGinnis, and editing and post-production is by Josh Elstro. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me at FOMOSapiens.com and at PatrickMcGinnis.com. To advertise on FOMOSapiens, reach out to contact at FOMOSapiens.com.